Evelyn to Phil, November 23rd, 1942, two months. Darling, I received your Friday letter today, bawling me out. I'm sorry, honey, but be assured my working days are over, or are they just beginning? I have no desire to exert myself the slightest bit. I haven't enough energy. I've practically stopped eating, but I feel okay. I'm uncomfortable at times and have had some pretty bad moments, but all in all, I can't complain. My ankles go up and down, so I guess it's only the extra weight. It drizzled all day and was generally miserable. We had lots of company yesterday. Sam, Pauline, Eddie, he looks swell. Etta, Nat, Ethel, Al, Paul, Tante Shuj. She slept over Saturday night. Page 2. Al had his car fixed and hopes it will be okay. Mickey doesn't like the work she's doing on her new job, but she likes the job itself. They have promised to give her what she wants. Jack S. is sick again. Constipation, cold, etc. and didn't go to work today. Goldie is here again for supper. Yep, it's getting serious. Harry told his boyfriends he is going steady. So decide for yourself. Mom is tickled pink. Jack N. didn't come home from New York last night, and I don't know whether or not he is working. Things are all messed up again in New York. They refused to rent an apartment to Lenny because they found out he is... Page 3, Going into the Army. I'm hoping this will be the last letter you'll receive from me. I hope you'll be here Thursday morn instead of your letter. I continu I'll continue to write, however, in case. I'm hoping Jack N. will bring my proofs home tonight, if he is working. Everyone who has seen the crib liked it immensely. You sure know how to pick them. Incidentally, baby, if you have any laundry you want to get into shape, bring it along if you come home. My dad expects to return to work this weekend. And here's some real news. My curse word, Bubby, is going to move. Yes, finally. My curse word, Uncle Morris, pardon the French, bought another... Page four, house. Yes, another one. And my curse word, Bubby, is going to have a room or something on the third floor. Boy, she's really going to get it, but good, this time. It won't be till January or February, but it seems she has definitely made up her mind. I'm not a bit sorry. Neither is mom or pop. My mom intends to buy a refrigerator and a bedroom set and become civilized once more. To say I'm glad would be putting it mildly. Ruth and I would like to get mom a nice dress for her birthday, and I'm still trying to figure out a way to get her to the store. Good night, precious. I'll be with you at 9 and Thursday. I hope, a hope, a hope. Forever your Evie. P.S. Of course you're forgiven for bawling me out. I love you so much. Philip to Evelyn, Monday, November 23rd, 5 p.m. Darling Ev, just received your anxiously awaited letter of the 20th. Somehow it got sent to the wrong place. I received no mail yesterday or this morning, so I was relieved when it came through this afternoon with the first record this morning's. I can't understand how they get the paper here overnight when mail takes two days, but it's good to read the good old record again, especially when it contains so much good news. I could kick myself for not realizing the significance of the 20th this month. Somehow it slipped my mind. Please forgive me, baby. Thanks a million for your kind sentiments and your husband's behalf. You may rest assured that your expressions of love and happiness in our union are enough to inspire the most humble gratitude in me, your adoring spouse.
May your picture of the 21st month be accurate in every detail. Today the weather was miserable. Rain fell all day. Consequently, we spent most of the day in barracks. However, I, page two, did get something done. At long last, I procured a copy of my insurance policy, which I am sending off to Mr. Jocelyn as soon as I finish this. This evening, Bob Hope, Francis Langford, and a few other stars are supposed to entertain us. Hope nothing happens to prevent their appearance. I don't know just how you want me to manage this furlough business, but I gathered from our phone conversation that you have a good reason for wanting it your way. Your letter tells me that you'll explain in a long letter, which I expect to receive tomorrow. I can only say this, honey. If your plan does not imperil my furlough in any way, I'll try to do as you ask since it means so much to you. You know how I feel about it. I'll want, like everything, to come to you when you leave for hospital. But if it will make you any happier to have me home with you, then I'll try to smother my impatience and fear. One request I will make, though, sweet. Please, for God's sake, see to it that I'm kept posted constantly by wire if necessary. Your happiness will always supersede any consideration I might be inclined to show myself or any one or anything. I hope for your sake that you know what you are doing so that when the time comes you will not suffer a moment's remorse for my page three absence. My only prayer now and a constant source of worry for me is that everything goes smoothly. If anything went wrong, baby, I could never forgive myself. Please, Angel, be strong for both our sakes and the newcomers. And when the time comes for your great trial, be brave in the knowledge that I am with you in the spirit, if not in the flesh. Remember, too, that it is us you are creating. When the moment arrives and your very heart may be blinded by pain, then and only then will you be able to determine for all time whether or not us will be us or just you and I. If this seems confused and vague to you now, it will become crystal clear to you at the time of which I speak. God bless you, my sweet wife and mother. May we laugh at my fears together when we gaze at the dear cherub safe and warm in her new crib. In spite of all the foregoing, I still feel I haven't made clear to you the extent of my love for you. If I live to be a hundred, there still won't be enough time available nor enough words invented to, page four, express it. Just think, Ev, how much you would want me to love you. Got it? Well, now you have a very, very faint idea of how great, how boundless my love for you actually is. Till tomorrow, dearest, I am your Phil. P.S. My love to all. Thank Mom for me for the record.